It's not five o'clock, and they don't care. Welcome to Wine to Five. Entertainment, education, and everyday drinking for everyday people. Your hosts are Valerie Caruso and Stephanie Davis, two wine educators who don't need a clock to know when to pour that next glass. Well, I'm excited about today's show and so happy to say that our special guest is moving up to the FOCO, to my neck of the woods. Today, we are drinking and chatting with Andrea Rogers. She is a certified specialist of wine, level one from the Court of Master of Sommeliers, WSET level three advanced, and she's a proud native Coloradoan with over 15 years experience in the wine industry. And wine is her passion. She's going to tell us all about that. And she's worked at all capacities of the wine industry, including five years at the distributor level, which is, I think, that's when we met, and seven years with a major fine wine importer. When she's not sharing her love and knowledge of wine with consumers, she enjoys spending time with her husband of 15 years, Brad, and her two young children, and a lot of time at soccer games. Exactly. <laughs> It will actually be 16 years this Friday. So wow. Brad and I have been married 16 years this Friday. Well, congratulations. <laughs> That's great. And listeners, I'm not sure if you remember, but back in episode 11, we talked about Andrea and we wanted episode to have Episode 100. Did, what did I say? 11. Oh my God. I told you, I've been sitting here drinking, waiting for you guys. Back <laughs> in episode 100. That's right. We talked. Why did I get 11 out of that? I don't know. Oh my gosh! Well, we talked to and we talked about Andrea and how we wanted to have her on our show, but the timing wasn't right, and our calendars didn't line up. And you know, welcome to life, right? So, we put together a super creative show today where Andrea is going to actually lead us through a taste along with wine cocktails. So, welcome to the show, Andrea. Thank you, Val. I am so excited to be here, cheers, and we're gonna. Cheers have our first toast of the new age white wine. So I thought it would be a lot of fun to talk about one of the most popular wines that I represent. And this wine is imported from Quintessential Imports and it is the number one selling wine in their entire portfolio. And it's truly taken the country by storm. So the first wine that we have in our glass is a blend of 90% Tarantas and 10% Sauvignon Blanc. They put the wine through a centrifuge and um, they stop the fermentation. So that creates the tiny little bubbles, the tiny little bit of effervescence that you'll see in the wine when you first pour it out of the bottle. And then it keeps the residual sugars um, semi-dry. So you yeah. have a semi-dry wine and low alcohol. So Low? Like how low? Like 9%. Nine, nine nine. Yes. It's really a match made in heaven. And especially... This time of year, I think that I, I drink wine according to the seasons, you know. So once it turns fall and winter, I'm looking for a heavier, darker, more velvety, supple wine. And then spring and summer comes, and I want something light and airy. And that's what these wines are all about. And the cocktails are so much fun. So did you get to try the New Age White just on its own, Val? I have all six glasses lined up in front of me here. Um, so I have the cocktail. Instead of lime, I have lemon. And honestly, oh. I thought it was going to be a lot sweeter. Isn't the, that funny? The residual sugar in here is it's barely negligible, and the acid balances it out. And I the was acid's great. I was super surprised. So I thought, oh, I'm going to need the lemon because it's probably going to be sweeter, and I wanted I wanted add acidity. So I sipped it with the lemon, and and then I tried it by itself, and it's it's super balanced. This is this was unexpected, honestly. When I saw that nine percent alcohol, that oh my god, it's going to be sticky sweet. It's not. It's not, it's not, and it's, um, it surprises wine drinkers and non-wine drinkers every single day I am out in the market, and I, I just feel so strongly and so passionately about this wine because I feel like there's so many wines out there as a consumer, 
And when you walk into the store, you're just inundated by all of these different wines. And how do you pick out, how do you discern the difference of all of them? And I, I can't even imagine how it is to be, you know, an average consumer. And honestly, I think that this is what most consumers really are looking for in a wine. An easy drinking, just delightful little wine that you can have fun with, you know? Yeah squeeze a lime in it. So let's try it that way with okay. the lime. And then we pour it over ice or just lime in your wine glass? Um, you pour it over ice. So this is called the Teen Show Cocktail. So what you do is you take the Let me go get the white, lime. And I'll pour the white in your glass as you grab the limes. So Teen Show actually means young one. And... Um, it is a term that it was kind of an enduring term that they used to call the grandson at the winery from the Bianchi family because New Age is all made by the Bianchi family. And Val and Stephanie, you know how many years have I been selling wine and all of those years family owned and operated is something that's truly near and dear to my heart because I think the quality, the consistency that you get from family owned and operated properties, there's nothing like it. And that's how wine began. It was all a family thing. And so And what's um, the story behind the Bianchi? So the family. Bianchi family started making wine in 1928 okay. in um, southern Mendoza. And then they just started the New Age wines about 10 years ago um, or a little bit before that. But roughly about a decade ago, they launched the New Age wines. So the grandson used to squeeze their white, um, in their white wine a little lime. I mean, this and is they called that a ticho. You pour the white wine over ice, squeeze a lime, and you have a tincho cocktail. Easy. Somebody who likes gin and tonics or vodka tonic or something like, would like this too. I agree. Yeah. Or you can, you can puree all kinds of different fruits, freeze them in a little ice tray. Yeah. Oh. Put the ice cubes, the pureed fruit in your glass, pour the white wine over, you have dessert. Done. Oh, my God. Yeah. And can we talk about the bottle? The bottle's a lot of fun, isn't it? The bottle it? is a lot of fun. There is a picture of... I'm going to let you describe it, Andrea. This is your bag, so... So there... We call her the New Age Lady let me in the see background. Her. Let me and, see her. You know, all around Argentina, you find little... I would say small restaurants, bistros, and women sitting outside. And it used to be, back in the day, they would have their hats on and oftentimes have a glass of wine. We know Argentina, they're huge consumers of, of wine. So wine is very much a part of their culture. The running joke about the lady is that she is very um, attractive. You want to look at her. But you know, once she starts talking back to you, you've had too much wine. Oh! So. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. I feel like I'm missing my hat and my red lipstick. Otherwise, she and I would really just hang out together exactly. <laughs> immediate best friends that's right this so. is very cool well let's move on to the next because we've got two more to go and the lady's starting to talk to me so and the lady's talking <laughs> to val over there does she have a name this lady she does not not that but you know and i think that's part of the fun the more wine you drink, you can give her your own name. <laughs> <laughs> She's going to have a name by the end of the show. <laughs> so the next wine we're going to taste is the New Age Rosé. This is a blend of 50% Malbec and 50% Merlot. And again, same process. Um, so it does have a bit of effervescence. They stop that fermentation so they keep the alcohols low. And you can drink this wine on its own. So Stephanie are gonna, and I are going to try it like that. You've got yours over there, Val? Yeah, I do. I have. A, I'm okay. sick. I'm. I'm. I'm almost pissed off. This is so good. I know. Right? <laughs> <laughs> well, Andrea wouldn't lead us astray. We do know that. That's right. I totally win it. And this wine has been. I just started representing these wines um, last October. So I work for a small brokerage 
here in the state of Colorado, and there's not many people that are brokers. Um, I have three portfolios that I work with, but all three of those portfolios are family-owned and operated properties. And I must say, this wine, the New Age portfolio, is the one that has shocked me the most because it fits a niche, it makes sense, and it's good juice. So, Gosh. And it's inexpensive. It's yeah. just a win-win-win. I was going to ask the the roundabout average price of these bottles. You know, it really depends where you are because I know that for podcasts, you're dealing with national prices. So I would say you're anywhere from $9 a bottle retail all the way up to $12.99. So it kind of runs the gamut, but, yeah. um, but you know, definitely in that affordable category. Do you know, is it... It's sold in what countries or is it across the U.S. and Argentina or is it in Europe? Do you know where else it's being sold? You know, I'm I'm not sure about all of the countries that they are importing to. Obviously, it is sold in Argentina. The Tincha White Cocktail is their number one cocktail of Argentina now. Wow. And this wine has only been out for, you know, just over a decade. Again, just, I mean, breaking all records. It is the, right here, according to um, some data that I have in front of me, it's the number one best-selling Argentine, Argentinian white wine nationally. And it's the eighth best-selling Argentinian wine nationally, and that's from Nielsen Data. That was back in 2012, so I bet that it's even better now. Cool. Well, I, you know, even though it's been out for 10 years, I'd never heard of it, so this is cool to be on the uh, wino radar for sure. Well, and you're not the only one, Stephanie. I mean, I can't tell you how many tastings I do with consumers. And again, just in the state of Colorado, we do about 10,000 cases of new age white wine a year. And that is just breaking the ice. I mean, that's a drop in the bucket because again, here you are in the wine yeah. industry and you've never had the wine. No, I know. Well, so wait, you just slipped in some orange into your uh, wine glass. So I need to, what are we doing? What's the next step? So the next step with the rosé is I want you to try it just with the orange wedge. Because again, talking about cocktails and the things that you can do with these wines, the versatility of the wines, with the rosé, I like it with a little orange wedge. Very refreshing. If you've ever had like a blue moon, you know, they always Beer, serve yeah. the... Yeah, they always serve the orange wedge, and it's kind of your treat at the end of your beer. And so, same kind of theory. And so, try just the wine with the orange before we put anything else in it. Yes, I'm almost thinking. I've already got Campari in mind, so I've got Cocktail City going on here. I'm almost thinking <laughs> this would be again. I go to Sangria for the summer when we talk about partying on the patio. Even though these are porch pounders. Totally. Totally. I could see a sangria with this with like peaches. Orange. Yes. Oh yeah. Oh, the peaches would be nice with the with the white one too. And raspberries with the rose. I I've got raspberries in my red. Just a spoiler. <laughs> <laughs> Did you try the rose by all by itself? Yeah. Val? That's that's the one that made me angry. Oh yes. <laughs> <laughs> this would have been a really great wine to have at my party where it's cost effective and my friends just, you know, we had a barbecue on Sunday and this would have been a really good, a good wine for them. I think they would have really liked it with the barbecue. Yeah. And you hit the nail on the head. It's a perfect party wine. You know, when you're having a lot of people over the house, you don't want to break the bank. You want to have something nice and something that's quaffable. Yeah. You know, yeah. this is easy drinking wine. Yeah. And it's a social wine. You know, you yeah. you want to sit down, you want to relax, and you want to chat with friends with this yeah. wine. Yeah, I love this. Well, I mean, you know me. I, I drink by myself, too, because it's I feel like it's part of the meal. And so, bam. <laughs> Toast to that. Me up. That was our virtual <laughs> up, cheers. But yeah. I would be, I mean, I would be drinking this. This is would be a great aperitivo. So the cocktail we just made is the rosé with an orange slice and then we've tried it a few different ways. You can add either Campari, like Val has. I have it with the Leopold Brothers Aperitivo. 
And then Andrea has it with uh, a, a splash of Aperol. So you can do it different ways depending on what you have at home. But this is this is fantastic. Now, did you try the I difference did. between the I cream? did. Yeah. And the Aperol is a little bit sweeter. So for, for somebody who wants something smoother and sweeter, the Aperol is the way to go. The Campari and the Aperitivo are more bitter. So, you know, kind of has like... Americano or um, Negroni kind of flavor going on when you add that those bitter notes, but but what a great cocktail over ice. But we have ours just in the wine glass, but even alone, the finish is what's really got me on this wine. Because if I were evaluating this wine and not knowing what it is, of course I'd have put it in the New World because it is fruity. Again, the sugar, it's there, it's off dry, but it's not it's not sweet. And and I I have to be honest, I would have walked right past the label. Because it says Dolce Natural or Naturally Sweet on it. And it's, it's, it's appealing to somebody who wants to grab that wine off the, off the shelf and drink on the front porch. So I wouldn't have expected the quality that I'm getting here. I love to price. hear that. Music to my ears. I wouldn't have expected to get this long finish. It's not a complex. It's fruit. It's a very well-made wine. And I am just... I feel like we've been in the dark. Like this wine has been out there... And I didn't know about it. And now that's why we're telling everybody on the show, like, hey, you guys, this is something that's cool and affordable. And you can drink it by itself. It's delicious. Yeah. And you can also make fun drinks with it. There's a ton of cocktails that um, New Age and, and the Bianchi family has available. We will have all of the links on our show notes so you can access there's tons of cocktails i mean tons i don't know like 20 20 30 online. cocktails to choose from um and you can find you know a cocktail to mix with your vodka a cocktail to mix with uh pisco i mean all sorts of cool stuff but before i go on and on i think we better get to the red yes hey sangria time now in the interim i'm going to tell you a couple more little selling points about these wines um, that I think is important to mention. I already mentioned that it is low alcohol. Um, that is always great. That's you know? a selling so, point for sure. Well, instead of one bottle, we can have two, right? Yeah, right. yeah. that's what lower <laughs> alcohol does, right? That's exactly <laughs> my point exactly. The other thing is, is it's low calories. So for the teen show, you're talking about like 96 calories. So low calories... And it has a screw cap. So we know with corked wines, with real natural corks, you do run a risk of cork, cork taint. And with these wines, you know that you're going to get a good bottle every single time. Yeah. So that's a great thing. That is a great thing. The other thing is, too, is they're sustainably farmed and estate grown and bottled. So, again, looking at quality control with a wine I think it's important to have that hands-on with, um, with the production from start to finish. And that's, again, why I believe in family-owned and operated properties. This just keeps getting better. You know what gets even better? What? I just looked at the alcohol on the red. 6%. There you go. <laughs> That's, I mean, there technically, that's not even wine in some countries. That's, and I've had beers that are stronger than that. That's so true. Yeah. It's and so, so you cool. can do a sangria with it. So what we're drinking right now, Stephanie, is we have the red wine. We tasted it on its own, which right. was quite delicious. It Stephanie, was. Stephanie, literally, her eyes just like <laughs> went, you know, <laughs> yeah, they, they were so big when she, after she took her first sip of having this wine because... You were, you were not expecting it to be that good. I don't even think of myself as much of a skeptic, but I, I was. I was. I was very unsure. And I think, like Val had mentioned, the, the fact that the label sa says Dulce Natural, Naturally Sweet, there is just some stigma, I think, that I think it's going to be cloying, you know, or it's going to be like a, a dessert, yeah. And I don't realize that it's more of like 
the balance of acid like key lime pie or the, the balance mm-hmm. of a, a, a great homemade lemonade or something, you know, where you're like, whoa, mm-hmm. it's not sweet. It's more tart. Like yeah. a really good homemade lemonade. Yeah. I never Homemade key lime mm-hmm. pie, you know, something that just, you know, you're like, God, there's the zing and the freshness and the, and, you know, you feel like you're cooling down mm-hmm. because you put all of these wines in the refrigerator. You know, you chill all of them, um, including the red, and that's how you drink it. Whether you add the lime or the orange or the ice cubes or what, what did we do? For the sangria we're about to taste, Andrea sliced up some nectarine, oranges, and limes. And okay. so those are the those are the three fruits that we have in this um, in this one. Okay. And can, and I, can I give it one more little thing that the red has that the other ones don't? Yes. Nutrition facts are on the back for five ounces. What? Now, That's just the red? Just, just the, the red. red does? 100 calories, 12 grams of sugar. I mean, your breakfast cereal and the juice and the most of the crap Americans eat has more sugar in it than this wine. Dude, that's why you said you were going to put it in your uh, breakfast smoothie? Smoothie. <laughs> I was gonna put it, my honey made me a smoothie this morning, and he left it in the fridge for me for when I got done working out. And then I opened the fridge, and I saw these three bottles. In fact, I Instagrammed them. And I thought, man, I really want to put that in my smoothie because the sugar is so low on it. It's 12 grams, I mean, comparatively to junk that Americans eat regularly. I was shocked by this. And I've got uh, raspberries and lemon in mine, by the way. Yeah, that's beautiful. Yeah. How are you digging on that? You know, it because of, there's a little bit of fizziness in this wine, which shocked me on its own. I have to say on its own for me, my preference for this one, I do prefer it with the raspberries in it, with the fruit. Because yeah. it's kind of the fizzy. I don't know if it brought out more of the raspberries. Because on its own, it's really blackberry. It's fruit dense. But... It brought out the raspberries, and then I think the acidity from the lemon has this right where I would serve this on the back patio with, like, you know, again, some some spicy uh, sriracha barbecue pulled pork or something. Oh, yeah. Put this with some ribs. Mm. Yeah. Delicious. Girl. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I'm really, I'm really pleased. Um, I definitely know some people I'm going to be sharing this with. Carmen, for sure, she needs to know about this. And Bruno makes a killer red sangria, the French style sangria the Royale. Royale. With the cognac. Yes. Yeah. But this, I mean, I'm going to be like, dude, this is from Argentina, and he will give it his blessing. I know it. So that's awesome. Yeah. Thank you. So definitely. Uh, so this is so cool. And you said it's affordable, so we're looking at like under $13. Exactly. And they all have the sexy lady. They do. So, you know, if you find yourself dateless one Friday <laughs> night, you, you can just run to yeah. your local liquor store and you'll have a date right there in the bottle. That's brilliant. And, you know, one thing I got to add is that I just came back from New Orleans and even in May, it's really hot. Oh, it's hot. I know. I know. It's, it's hot and it's humid and you're miserable. Do not go any time between May and September. Maybe, you know, don't risk it. Maybe don't even go in October. But what I was going to say is I had this epiphany that when I was there about why there isn't much of a wine culture unless you're at the hoity-toity fancy, you know, James Beard Award winning restaurant. It's because it's so hot. I mean, how you can't sit outside with a glass of wine without it turning warm. Yeah. And I, I was telling Justin, I said, I'm getting this now. I get the ice cubes in wine. I get, I'm starting to understand why some of the country and some other parts of the world, the closer you are to the equator, the less you enjoy having a glass of white wine or even a glass of red wine, right? Because then it's even hotter. Especially red wine. Especially red wine. Right. It never stays cold enough to enjoy it. We even opened a really nice bottle that we brought in our suitcase, a 2005 um, Justin Isosceles Reserve. Wow. And we're trying to have it on the patio at night, and it is too hot. It's just too hot. And that's why these drinks, you know, that are created Mm -hmm. for drinking it over ice, adding some fruit... Yeah. That you can have wine 
you don't even have to um, fortify it, you know, with with any vodka or brandy yeah. to beef it up. You just have a low alcohol, cold, refreshing drink. Exactly. And I get it. I totally get it now. I was just like, even my beer was warm after like <laughs> minutes. I'm like, yeah. that's what? why they love koozies in the South. Yes. You know, the South just. It, it kicks it up a notch. For but sure. half of the year, half of the year, your beverage is hot. Well, you got to have a koozie. <laughs> you got to have lots of coolers. Yeah. But it's interesting that you talk about the South because as you were talking about that, I've never thought about these wines and cocktails with Cajun cuisine. Oh. They would be yeah. killer. Mm. Knock Put your socks off. With a mean jambalaya, mm -hmm. especially that rosé. Yeah. yeah. Match made in heaven. Yeah. Match made in heaven. Uh, the the red that we're drinking right now, I didn't talk about the blend, and we have 70% Bernarda, 30% Malbec in the blend. And there is a lot of Bernarda, as we know, planted in Argentina. Mm -hmm. And it's a, it's a grape that does quite well, but you don't find it as much as Malbec. So it's kind of cool to have a wine that has this Italian flair to yeah. it. Yeah. Because we know Bernarda is an Italian varietal, and, and here we are with the red. Yeah. So that's, I think, I think you know, there's a lot to be said here, but we could go on and on and keep drinking. I think we need to... Um, I'm still drinking. <laughs> I know. I Well, because Val and I have some fun other uh, factoids about cocktails. We thought we would just carry this theme on. And one of the things I, I've never had... And uh, I'm going to be trying it at some point here very soon. But have either of you had a Cali Mocho? I've never had a Cali Mocho. I think now, I have. You think you have? I think I have. In which country? Spain. In Spain. Spain. Okay. Yeah, because we were in Basque Country about five years ago. Yeah. I may you, have. Yeah. I may have in a in a in a tapas. Well, they call pincho in Basque Country. Yeah. Pincho. Right. Well, so in the 1970s, Basque culture, this is a classic cocktail called Cali Mocho. It's spelled with a K, K-A-L-I-M-O-T-X-O. And it's made with equal parts, mm -hmm. red wine and Coca-Cola or a cola beverage served over ice. And, you know, the, the story goes that it was basically like, how do they use some some red wine that has been open too long, and so they mixed it with Coca-Cola. But this is a cocktail that you see in Spain. It's very iconic. I have never had it, but I was surprised that it's actually made in so many other countries. It's just called something different. In Spain, you might also see it as Rioja Libre or the Cuba Libre del Pobre, meaning the poor man's Cuba Libra. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so I saw versions of it in Chile, Germany, uh, Romania, Croatia, Hungary, South Africa. I mean, it went on and on when you're looking online what other countries are making a similar cocktail to the Calimocho. And sometimes you'll see it even with a dash of ouzo or blackberry liqueur or just like our red sangria. Sometimes you'll see the Calimocho dressed up with a little bit of fruit, some citrus fruit, lime, orange, and making it into a sangria. I even saw that it's recommended as an afternoon pick-me-up because of the caffeine in the Coke. Wow. I think it sounds so cool. I think when I move to Fort Collins, we need to have a cow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, cheers a to Cali that. A Mocho with some pinchos. Yes, that's right. that's right. So there's a there's a link I have to a New York Times article about Cali Mocho. There's a lot of great information out there and some different recipes, but something to play along with this summer, using up your red wine uh, and uh, maybe, you know, cracking open a Coke. <laughs> well, the other thing that I like about that is there are times and not not often in my household, there are times that I find that I have you know, a little leftover wine in the bottle. 
and then you get busy and life happens and then you have this wine and it always breaks my heart <laughs> just a little bit to pour a good wine down the drain. Right. So to be able to repurpose that, yeah. I love I love that concept. So I, yeah. I'm going to do it. Down with sure. it? Yeah. Well, and when I move to Fort Collins, we're going to have one together. You for sure. know it. You're going to come and I, you're going to be unexpected. You know, I'll be mm-hmm. like, oh, Kelly Mojo. <laughs> but do you guys keep soda in the house? Because we don't. I don't. I, I think I'll have to, you know, make a special trip. Yeah. I have soda in the house usually because... Justin loves to have soda with his popcorn when he watches movies. Okay. He can't, well, he can't really seem to break it. There's better than that. <laughs> he yeah. loves soda popcorn. <laughs> Sweet and salty. Yeah. Sweet and salty right there. Well, exactly. you know, we actually have some. We had a barbecue on Sunday, and we always pick up a couple bottles for people who, who do drink it, because otherwise we don't. So yeah. we actually do right now have Sprite and Coke in the house. So yeah. it might be something fun to try. I don't know. I, I do this because I'm not a big soda drinker unless it's like those homemade craft sodas or something like that. But but again, this wine has less sugar than soda. So. It does. Unbelievable. And there's so many ways that you can make some really amazing cocktails, easy cocktails, and really surprise your friends. Like yeah. you, you are going to be the hit host or hostess of the year by bringing out these wines and doing something fun with them. So please do go on Quintessential's website. It's www.quintessentialwines.com and look up New Age. And when you click on there, there's a little tab that you can click on for their full presentation. You can learn everything about these wines. And then you can also click on a tab that has all the recipes that you were talking about. And we're going to put that on the link. Yep, definitely. Well, thank you for sharing those wines with us today. That was really an eye-opening experience because I have to be honest, they were in the fridge and John opens up, he goes, What's what's going on here, Val? I mean, you know, because I, I took yesterday off from drinking because of our party on Sunday. I actually woke up hungover yesterday, which I never do. Wow. I'm never, ever hungover because I don't like it. And no. so apparently I just kept drinking. We had like Lambrusco and whatever port on Sunday. And so I woke up. I didn't drink at all yesterday. And so John sees these three bottles lined up in the fridge and he's like, what's what's going on here? I'm like, oh, they're for the show, you know, and um, yeah, (laughs) but he was really surprised to see it. So I was, I really appreciate you sharing these with us today and the story. Andrea, as always, you give an amazing wine presentation. And I think that's why Steph and I stalked you (laughs) and why we're all friends to this day, because you're amazing when you talk about wine, really. That's right. I truly love it. I really do. And there's, There's a reason for wine. And when I started in the wine industry, when I started researching about wine, you start to read about why wine started and the the link between wine and food and the culture of the countries. And it is interwoven in every culture around the world. And um, just when we think we know everything about wine, yeah. a wine like this, like New Age, comes along and surprises us. So it's, it's a fun industry to be a part of. And I'm so blessed to have the two of you in my life. And, um, you know, gosh, friendship for so many years. And yeah. then the fact that you guys have started this amazing podcast. I'm so proud of the two of you. Oh, oh thank, thank you. you. All because we both know you. You're the one that brought That's us together. Right. So <laughs> listeners, in case you don't remember, so definitely crazy. raise your glass to Andrea because without her, this podcast would not exist. Yeah. Yay. Yay. <laughs> hey, how what do, else we got, Val? How do you ladies feel about raw eggs and cocktails? Love it. Andrea? I've never had a raw egg in a cocktail that I know of. What? You know, I, the, today's the, the day of I must, I, I guess I need to get out more often. <laughs> I don't know. I, I need to try one. Well, I know last year we could not get enough of the Ramos Gin Fizz in this bar down in New Orleans that we were in. And it was, was it the Monticello? Which one was it? The Roosevelt. The Roosevelt and, Hotel. And the Roosevelt Hotel, and it's in the Sazerac Bar, and you know it. I went back for one of those. I figured you would. So yeah. the, what makes this Ramos Gin Fizz, besides the fact it's it's just amazing and you cannot stop sipping it through your straw, is this fluffy, frothy bit and this creamy texture that it has. And I've mentioned here on the show that I was always hesitant to put 
a raw egg in my home cocktail because my I know my eggs aren't pasteurized. But how many times have we enjoyed these smooth, creamy cocktails in a bar and maybe not wittingly being aware of the fact that we've had a raw egg in our cocktail? So at home, you know, like I said, I kind of stay away from it. But then through my Twitter feed, I see this article from Liquor.com. In fact, we met the owner of Liquor.com at PodFest, didn't we, Stuff. Yeah, yeah. So this article is actually from 2015, but it explains what we should not be fearing with respect to raw eggs and cocktails and where salmonella is concerned, because that's always my big concern. So I did go out and do a little tiny bit of research because that's that's what I'm doing for school right now and found that only one in 20,000 eggs, according to the FDA, and I'm going to link up their safety brochure for you, contains the salmonella bacteria. So the article on liquor.com actually goes on to say that death from choking on food is more common than getting that salmonella from yeah. a raw egg. Yeah. So it's you've got one in 5,000 chance of choking on a food, and I know that's a really pleasant, cheerful topic, but only one in 20,000 chance, according to the FDA. So what I'm also going to link up for you guys is the CDC website, because you can get some safe handling tips there. And they do mention that, you know, if you're going to use a raw egg, try to get a pasteurized egg. You can do that. So I say we raise our glasses and say cheers to the joy that comes from adding that little extra protein to our cocktails. And definitely check out the CDC website if you're going to make a cocktail. And maybe use a pasteurized egg and then you can have a nice fluffy Ramos Gin Fizz. And there's a bunch of other cocktails on there as well that you can check out. So I thought that was very interesting that, you know, I'm probably going to choke on something before I get salmonella from an egg in my cocktail. It's all perspective. It's all perspective. Yes. So. I mean, I've I've made at home, I've only made one cocktail at home with an egg. It won't be the last, but it was a Meyer lemon whiskey sour mm-hmm. that had an egg white, so it was all frothy on top, and it was out of this world. I mean, the frothiness rounds out the drink, gives it some cool texture and flavor, right. protein, you know, not that yeah. anybody's really, you know, necessarily looking for that, but it does. It does. Well, I wonder. I wonder if that you'd put it in the same category as like umami, like with a sake. It gives mm. it that um, that weight, the the fattiness too in your drink. Well, it's just, I don't know. It's just the white. I it's don't just know. the egg white. So I don't yeah. know. I, I don't know. know. Yeah, it's but more like a meringue. It kind meringue. of gives it it's more like yeah, thing. yeah, yeah. Fresh. Yeah, but it's it's an yeah. interesting thing to you know. Like I said, I'm not a mixologist, so. Maybe, maybe there is something to that, but it's just something that, you know, we've talked about recently that I thought, well, let's revisit this because it kept showing up in my feed and I'm like, let me explore a little bit more. I like that idea. There's another product when you talked about that, there's another product that is similar to that and reminded me of this product my business partner raves about and it's called Creamy Frothy Head. What? It basically does the same thing. Um, You can sit into your drink and it will create a nice frothy head on your drink and he he swears by it he's been doing this for 30 plus years yeah yeah same theory this is this is what it looks like stephanie so frothy frothy, creamy creamy head head. oh (laughs) that's on amazon i'm sorry oh my god i worked with dudes for too long and my mind has got the sophomoric jokes i'm sending you Frothy, creamy head, Val. God, I love you. (laughs) Seriously. Should we move on to shout outs? We're running long here. I think think we've got a lot of Wino Radar and shout outs today. So, yes. Go ahead, Val. I I think I'm giving mine up for our long episode. All right. Just some shout outs because they're timely to fellow podcasters. We've mentioned this before. The biggest surprises that come from our craft have been the connections that we've made, not only in the wine world, but in the podcasting world. So I'm going to post the links, but the first one, and you've probably seen it on our Facebook page if you're on Facebook, is a video by Juliet Miranda of The Unwritable Rant. She did a tasting of the Blade and Bow bourbon that I had on the show last week, actually, for y'all. And she said, <laughs> y'all. Cheers, y'all. Yeah. I love her. I'd invite you guys to sit back, listen to this lady's podcast as well, maybe while sipping some bourbon, because not only did she interview legends in music, I'm talking like Don McClain, Charlie Daniels, 
Um, was it Chuck Negron of uh, Three Dog Night? I mean, comedians, actors, an occasional porn star, which is actually a very interesting interview. She's a master storyteller, and you definitely want to give her podcast a listen. And usually she's doing it over a glass of bourbon. So we'll post the interview, or I'm sorry, we'll post the link to that video if you haven't seen it on Facebook. It's a really short video, but uh, she's she's basically giving us a shout out and tasting the Blade and Bow bourbon because of a recommendation that we had for her. So cheers, Juliet, and your man, and the Unwritable Rant. The next podcast shout out goes to Jason Gray of Gray Area Farm Steadcast. Full disclosure, I've known Jason for about five years. I met him when I was networking my wine business out in Falcon, east of Colorado Springs. But he has since taken up the country life out on the prairie and has been our local authority on self-sustaining farming and the like. He also picks up all of my bottles for his Earthship uh, home project, so no longer are the recycling guys judging me for being an alcoholic. If you're curious about what an Earthship home is, you'll have to listen to the Steadcast to find out, but we'll link up this episode because he paid homage to the Wine to Five ladies with a What's in Our Glasses segment last week and even this week. And Jason, I gotta tell you, dude, we are honored to be included in the Pigs in Heat episode as well. Not sure what you're trying to tell us, but thank you. But we'll send you some of the frothy head. And, yeah, there you go. There you go. Put that in your mason jar. There you go. Oh, and then finally, I have to give a shout out this week to Dr. Desiree and her team at the Cupcake Doctor. They took their winning Cupcake Wars port wine cupcake recipe and they made it into a custom birth- birthday cake from my beloved he was over the moon with this cake, particularly the fondant stegosaur on top, which is our Colorado State dinosaur. And oh, I know. Well, you know, and for those of you that don't know, my beloved is an amateur anthropo- uh, paleontologist. So, you know, we have dinosaur bones in our house. That's how we roll. But I will post a pic. We served this cake with the 2011 late bottle vintage port from Taylor and Fladgate and some blue bunny cherry pick and chocolate ice cream. But I should also mention that the Cupcake Doctor is worthy of our radar because of their daily offerings of booze infused cupcakes. Today is Tuesday and some of their flavors include tiramisu, maple bacon, amaretto, just saying. So that is our shout outs for the week. Andrea, do you have any shout outs this week? You know, first and foremost, my shout out would be the two of you. It's such an honor to be on your show. And I am so proud of you two really chasing your dreams. And it's a cool thing to see. And uh, thanks for having me on. Thanks for letting me share New Age. It is such a fun product. So I hope every day I go out there, I hope my goal is to help the consumers find one more product that they feel that comfortable with to pick up on the shelves and feel confident about their purchases so have fun with a little new age yeah well and thank you thank you for bringing all of this great wine to us and for giving us your time and of course we liked all the compliments too but (laughs) (laughs) so uh this is great show but it's run a little bit long so i think we'll just wrap it up with some patreon love and send out some extra affection to our tenacious tasters like Jeff E. from the We Like Drinking podcast. And I love my new t-shirt, Jeff, by the way. And Lynn from Savor the Harvest and Sebastian from Sassy Italy Tours. And just as a side note, everybody, there are links to all of these businesses and podcasts and blogs Uh, on our show notes so please check out our website and you can find out what sassy italy tours is so we also want to say thank you to our it's not five o'clock and we don't care listeners meg from south dakota clay from arizona john in california andrew in illinois that was last week's episode and aswani in california you can also jump on the bandwagon and join patreon and be included in these thank yous. And you can do that by going on to our patreon.com forward slash wine two five podcast. We do have giveaways and even at the two dollar a month tastemaker level. So check that out. Also, we will be drawing our June winner next week as well. So every month Ooh. we do the drawings. Yes. Yeah, by the right. time this airs, it's still May, so we will be drawing it next week. So if you guys love the Wine to Five podcast, we'd love it if you would share the Wine to Five podcast. Subscribe to our show, link it, tweet it, Facebook it, 
grab somebody's phone, help them subscribe, push play. We also love when you become part of our community and leave us a burning wine question or a comment on SpeakPipe. We can hear your voice on the show. That'd be really cool. Write us a review on Apple Podcasts or iHeartRadio. And head over to our website, shop our store. We've got wine books, accessories, all kinds of goodies over there. And everything, really, guys, it's on our website. Links to Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, YouTube, Google+. And you can connect with me. I'm Val. I'm on Twitter, at Unboxed, And I'm on the Vina with Val Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest pages. Steph here, she is on Twitter, Instagram, and Pinterest as the Wine Heroine. And you can connect with her personally on Facebook. And Andrea... Can we connect with you in the social media spaces anywhere? You know, it's funny that you say that. I, I'm not as up with the times as the two of you. I need to get on that. I do have a Twitter account, oh. and I do have a, my Wine Time account on Facebook. So okay. you can find me at Wine Time on Facebook, and I'd love to hear from you all. What's your Twitter handle? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> oh, great, because I was going to go out there and try and stalk you, but... Yeah. I will I will find that out, and you all can put that on your link, because... Yeah, F, definitely. Let us know. We'll, we will. We'll find you. We'll stalk you. Uh, yeah, I, I, don't, I wouldn't say I'm personally up with the times. I'm like the you kids get off my lawn of social media, so, um, you know, I'm there most of the time, but not in all places at all times, but... Everybody, I hope you guys enjoyed this week's episode. We will be back next week with Joe Fatterini of Wine Show TV in the UK. So till next week, everybody. Cheers. Thank you for listening to the Wine to Five podcast. Be sure to check us out at Facebook slash Wine TWO 5. And tune in next week for more fun and useful SIP tips.